Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to the session. Uh, this is Boost Your App's Performance with Platform Cash. Uh, my name is Danny Cheng, and I'm an ISV technical evangelist here at Salesforce. Uh, and as part of our day job, um, we are in our team is in charge of working with our partners who develop on our platform. Um, and um, we all specialize in a different uh, product or features within Salesforce. And um, that area of expertise for me is Apex, and Platform Cash happens to fall under that. Um, and so let's get started. Let's start with the forward-looking statement. Please remember that Salesforce is a publicly traded company. And when making your purchasing decisions, please do so based on only the information that are generally available today. All right, so what is Platform Cash? And before we get started, actually, who wants their app to run faster? OK, um, I feel like that's an obvious question. That's almost like asking, how much money do you want? Do you want more money or less money? Uh, but yes. <laughs> And what is Platform Cash? That'll help you um, make your app run faster. Um, what Platform Cash is, is it's just like any cash, and you can see it like it's RAM for your application, uh, for your Salesforce org data. And what you can do with that is you can, um, and there's two different kinds of caches. There's org cache and session cache. Uh, org cache works for org-wide data for anyone in the org, and session cache is data for a specific user stored up to eight hours or if the user logs out or the session expires, then it will be done. Uh, and you might be wondering why there's a squirrel on the, um, on the slide. And that's because we like to make the analogy, if you're not familiar with what cash is, um, is if, the, if a squirrel wants to eat, right? Um, he needs to go up a tree to get its nuts. Uh, but the, we like to see the cheeks um, as the cash because it's a lot faster to eat from your cheeks rather than going up and back, back up and down from the tree all the time. Uh, so there's a little cute little squirrel. All right, so now that we kind of covered what platform cash is, let's go over how much platform cash you might need and why. Um, if you're an enterprise um, in unlimited or performance edition users, the good news is that you already have some cash storage for free allocated to your org. Um, that's 10 megabytes for enterprise users and 30 megabytes for performance and unlimited edition users. And so if you weren't aware, please go and check it out. And if you realize that you need maybe more space, um, they are sold in 10 megabyte blocks. Um, you can contact your Salesforce representative about account, management, account manager about that. And ISV can also purchase cash for their application. And good thing about that is because there's namespace associated to your platform cash, or cash states, um, uh, only the application that's, that's related to that namespace uh, can use that. So for example, if your customer installs that cache space, installs your application on their org, um, only, the, only your application access that. And the customer's original in, um, home code, in-house in code will not be able to touch that. And you might be wondering why you might need performance uh, platform cache. Um, there's a lot of performance gains uh, to be achieved. Uh, this is based on a sample app, um, so you obviously, depending on the use case and your, um, your application, uh, this performance improvement might be a little different. But uh, in general, API calls, two orders of magnitude greater. Uh, we'll be going over a demo shortly that will show you how much that could be um, benefited. And also SOCL, anywhere between 2 to 40 times the original performance. Um, the, the number, there's a discrepancy because if you're make, maybe making um, multi-transactional queries, that might take a little longer, but that saves more time uh, for your, uh, with your platform cache. All right, and let's just go over some top use cases. What kind of data should you be storing with your platform cache? Uh, what we recommend, one of, three, one, one of these three maybe would be a good um, candidate to, use your, um, to cache your data with. Sta first would be static data. And a good example of that would be maybe the daily exchange rate. Um, maybe you, your account reps need to work with different um, countries and different accounts in different countries. Um, but if you store that every day, um, everybody in your org will be using that frequently every day. Um, so that would be one good example. And a bad example would be maybe if you're trying to keep track of the stock price uh, of a company, um, that information changes constantly, every second almost. And so if you're trying to access it at noon, yesterday, uh, noon today, uh, that information will be invalid by the time you try to access it again at maybe 12.05 or 12.10. Uh, so then th there will be a cache miss. Then you have to go back to the external system, get that value back. And so it's just not a good candidate. And I kind of touched on this, but frequently used data as well. Um, if your account reps are using exchange rates every day, um, and that 
back and forth between the external system, back and forth, um, is expensive. Uh, but if you store it internally in your platform cache, uh, they'll be a lot better, a lot faster. And complex computations. Uh, you got to keep in mind whenever you make these computations, it's not just uh, time that you're wasting, but it's also infrastructure resources, like uh, the CPU, um, electricity, anything. And, but if you're to store that um, in your cache and then refer back to it later, that saves not only time, but also those resources. All right, and let's get into a quick little demo to show you how all that works. Okay, so right now we're in setup. Uh, and this is what Platform Cache looks like if you have it enabled in your org. Um, this is just some general statistics about your cache usage. Uh, right now we see that we're only using 0.01% of the cache. Uh, and right now we, have the, we only have trial enabled. And the alloc partition allocation, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but what that is, is between org cache and session cache, if you're trying to maybe use 5 megabytes of org, ca org, org, session, org cache, and five megabytes of session cache. You can divvy that up however you want, and uh, it'll be shown right here. But for the sake of the demo, we only have org cache, enab uh, org cache enabled right now. And it's called demo cache. And the story here is that we uh, run a banana store, uh, banana stand, and we have a complex model in an external system. So we are going to do a very complex computation on our Heroku app, and then we're going to fetch that value back into our system. And just to show you what that looks like here, it's a very simple, almost like a web page, pretty much. And after a little bit of a delay, it's going to return a number. All right, there we go. OK. And um, actually, to, and then let's just set that to maybe four seconds. So we're going to make the application wait four seconds before returning a value. Let me check. All right, great. It's done. OK, and now we're trying to determine how many bananas we're going to need for tomorrow. So let's pick that date. Today's the 9th, so let's go to the 10th. And we are going to calculate, calculating. And see how long this is taking, four seconds to be exact. Uh, but yeah, and then it returns a number. Uh, but the beauty of that is that when we fetch that value just right now, it warmed up the cache. Because if you want to store a value, you need to, some, you need to start with something, right? And then when we just made this call, uh, we store this into our cache. So that means if we click it one more time to do th redo this calculation, calculation, so to speak, um, this is already in the cache. So this will be a lot faster. So we're going to calculate one more time for this date. And it was instant. Uh, we'll go through the code in a little bit. Uh, but because it's in the cache, if you want to redo this calculation, it's going to be instant almost. Uh, but you also see if we maybe pick a different date, there's going to be a cache miss, obviously. Because we're not going to we haven't done this computation for November 27th yet. So if we do this again one more time, it's going to take another four seconds. You need 24,601. But if you do this calculation one more time, because it warmed up the cache one more time, for this date, it's going to be instant. And going into the code and to see how simple this is, all I'm doing is literally, um, I first have it here. Where are they going? Uh, I have a private variable here um, on an org partition. And then all we have to do is here, we're going to get the date. We have the my date. Uh, we're going to make this get call. And as soon as we have the response, we're going to put that value in. And all we have to do is this dot org part that put. So there's put method. Um, you have to do, it's a key value pair. So the key would be the model's date. And the value would be however many bananas that uh, the model calculated. All right, great. Back to the presentation. Or not. Oh, there you go. OK. All right. And some best practices to get the most out of your platform cache. We kind of went over what the top use cases are, but also keep in mind it's not just about those um, maybe sta it's not just about the static data frequently used. It's also about what part of that data you actually want to store. Uh, so, for example, the the demo is really simple. You just need to store a number. But let's say you got an account record and you want to maybe store the account um, 
account email address, account name, and account revenue. But do you really need all that information? Maybe you just need to store maybe one or two fields related to that data. Uh, so that's one thing that you should keep in mind. Another one is that uh, when uh, patterns for cache storage, um, we recommend that obviously, depending on your app and your use case, it will be different. Um, but please try to include all the logic for managing the cache in one class. When you have it all in front of you in one place, there's only one source of error that you could possibly have. And you will also tr it'll be good for trying to avoid overriding already cached values from different methods from different classes. And also design for cache misses. Uh, the saying goes, uh, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst, right? So if there's a cache miss, like the cache has been already warmed up, so uh, in the context of our demo, that would be if you haven't already done the calculation for that date, uh, you're going to need to design for that. So cache misses uh, could, be, uh, could be fatal if you don't know what the value is. Uh, so keep that in mind. And also diagnose cache usage. You might think you designed a really good app and your cache is working perfectly. But, what it, but you, let's say you really want to know how good it is. Uh, we saw the page earlier in the demo where it was showing the chart with the little graphs and whatnot. Um, so if you want to make sure that your users are getting the best uh, out of your cache space, um, always be checking that out when, uh, when you're developing. All right. And next steps, if you go back to the office on Monday or maybe tomorrow, and maybe you forgot everything that I just talked about, just please remember the trailhead. There's a really good trailhead, and the demo was actually kind of based on uh, that module. So please go check it out. And you can also request a free trial. That step is also on the trailhead. Um, and then uh, there's a little button when you go to setup. You go to platform cache. There's a little button that says request free trial. And you'll be able to get it instantly. Uh, so try it out, uh, maybe in your developer org. And check it out to see if it's right for you. And finally, obviously, start using Platform Cache. Again, Enterprise Editions, Unlimited Editions, and uh, uh, Performance Editions have 30 megabytes to 10 megabytes already allocated. So go check it out, um, and might as well start using it, because it's free. And with that, thank you so much. I uh, hope you guys have a great Dreamforce. Um, and hopefully, I'll see you guys back next year.